Uh, my talk is about um, Dino outside of just HTTP servers and websites and how how it's used uh, currently and how it how it can be used uh, for native apps for uh, desktop apps and stuff. Uh, so my topics are going to be about Geno compile and web GPU windowing mostly focusing on Geno compile uh, because there have been some recent changes which I think are exciting uh, and I didn't have any yet anything else to talk about uh, so there are like four categories of consumer software like widely used consumer software apps games websites and CLI uh, I think Dino can really shine for the last two but like have you have ever heard someone build an app or a game with Dino? It's like a very niche thing to do, right? Uh, and there are not a lot of good toolings for that currently. Uh, and so uh, we have been trying to implement things into the Dino binary that make distribution easy, that make it possible to integrate with the native window um and also make uh, like integrate web gpu uh with like you can render a web gpu window uh, onto window uh, and that will be a good like primitive to build on top of uh yeah so do you know compile um do you know compile is a tool for turning javascript typescript code into shippable executables it does not really compile javascript that's hard uh, so what we do is kind of try to embed uh, JavaScript into an existing binary, and that binary then tries to like read from itself uh, and then execute the JavaScript. So this is how it works. Um, for every Dino release, we create two binaries, uh, which is Dino, and then there's one called Dino RT. Dino RT stands for Dino Runtime, um, and it is basically a smaller version of the Dino CLI. Uh, and what it does is it does not have any tooling, like formatting, linting, bundling, uh, so it can be much smaller. Uh, and when, when you do Dino compile uh, on a script, it will bundle that to an ESZip, which is our own format for um, like bundling JavaScript. And then we kind of embed that or inject that now into the Dino RT binary from a release. And then we just rename it to game.exe or game or something. And there's a magic in here um, about like how we inject it. Uh, so yeah, the inner workings. So this is before, I think it has shipped, right? I don't know. Uh, this is before the latest changes. How it used to work is that we got the Dino RT EXE from the releases. And when you do Dino compile, it would just embed, append the metadata at the end, a magic number to identify that. Um, and then when you execute this binary, the code inside will try to read from the end and discover this magic number. And then it will just read the data here um, and execute it. Uh, and this was pretty easy and it worked for uh, works on Linux pretty well, but there are a few limitations with it. So well, first of all, code signing does not work. Uh, on Mac OS and Windows, code signing is kind of important to ship apps. Um, and there were many users who were not able to distribute um, um, using Dino compile and were frustrated. Um, so yeah, here are a bunch of issues related to that. And I think that was like the most requested Dino compile feature uh, for a long time. Um, so well, on Mac, so when you append uh, to a binary on Mac OS, you invalidate its code signature that it comes with. So by default, when we compile Dino, the linker um, like, will calculate the code signature at the end and then 
insert uh, a LC segment, a load command segment uh, that has the signature. And by appending at the end, we kind of invalidate that. And luckily for us, uh, code sign, which is the tool used in macOS to sign it, and the macOS kernel have two different implementations of this. Code sign is a bit strict, and the kernel is a bit chill. So the kernel allows you to run it, uh, and that's how Dino compile worked for a long time. But code sign uh, will not allow it, and it will complain about it not working. Um, the other problem on Windows is that um, antivirus don't really like it, and that's because uh, yeah they don't expect random data at the end of the binary, and that is a bit uh, sus. So <laughs> the new working. Um, so now when you run Dino compile, it will actually parse the it will partially parse the Dino binary, Dino RT binary. So if it's on Mac OS uh, or if it's on Windows, that's going to be a portable executable. On Linux, it's going to be ELF. Or actually, on Linux, we don't do anything. We just append it at the end for now. So uh, yeah, so on Mac OS, it will parse the structure. Uh, it will get the header, the actual uh, data after the header, and then the linked edge segment. Uh, a linked edge segment is required at the end of the binary. Uh, this is what code sign will look to validate the whole binary. And what Dino compile does is that it takes this, it passes it, takes it apart, and then injects the metadata that would normally go uh, uh, at the end into a new segment into this binary. It will tweak the offsets in the header. It will then yeah, inject a segment and it will resign this whole binary and update this linked segment as well. So it kind of does like a partial linking step after linking the binary. Uh, and yeah, this is landing in 146. So this will allow people to code sign because this is now a fully signed, fully linker signed um, valid binary for code sign. And to do this, um, I created a crate called SUI. SUI in Hindi means injection or, yeah, it means injection or like needle. Uh, and this is kind of, this was supposed to be kind of just a wrapper around Node.js Postject, but Postject has its own problems and uh, it's it uses WebAssembly, uh, it's an NPM package. So to use that from Rust, I had to like write C++ bindings and it was just bloated. Uh, like it, it, adding that would cost two megabytes of binary size increase in Dino. So we just rewrote this in Rust. Um, and the advantage it has over PostCheck is that it can code sign Apple binaries. Uh, I'll come to the comparison in a second. Um, and it's also much faster and it is uh, smaller. Yeah, so I'll do a quick demo of uh, like how this works. Okay, first of all, um, this is Node.js single executable applications. This is their uh, current way of embedding of like Dino compile. And as you can see, this has about eight steps on how to do it. And it involves doing like removing the code sign signature, and then you run post post check with your own like thing, and yeah, like you you sign it, and then you can run it. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of steps, and no one really wants to do that. Uh, so in Dino compile, because our Rust crate can now code sign like at the uh, after doing its job. So this whole step and this whole step is just the same, uh, like just done by Dino compile. And because Dino RT has no signatures by default, uh, or if it does, we will just overwrite it. So this step is also not important. And yeah, so it's just one step for us. Uh, 
And so, for example, you're saying that D over D has no signature by default? Uh, it does. It's a linker assigned signature. So the no. so we don't really code sign it, okay. but the linker will do it during cargo build. Okay. Um, we're trying to get that. Yeah. So um, let's create a simple. Yeah. And if I run Dino compile, so I'm on Dino. Yeah, it has the new changes. This will pull in Dino RT and done. Um, I should say hello world. Uh, and to the end user, there's just no difference from the old way of how this worked. But if you now try to look at what the binary is, um, you'll see it's, um, yeah, it's signed using the ad hoc and linker sign um, flags. And the identifier A dot out is hard coded into SUI that basically, if you look at the executable and if it's a dot out, then it is signed by SUI. Uh, by a dot out, I don't know. Uh, that was that is what uh, Go does. So, and yeah, let's try to sign this. So, sign and then demo. Yeah, sign now. And if I run this. It's working. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to really look into like the actual segment, this is the LC code signature at the end. Uh, oh, this is actually the load command. The actual thing is at the end of the binary. Um, and yeah, uh, that's how it works uh, on Mac OS. I have a more uh, bigger demo. Yeah, so I have this game, like sort of a game written in SDL2. It uses uh, SDL2 to draw Dino and then uses mouse motion to follow the character. And if I run this, we just move them. <laughs> What? Uh, if you need to go. Click on. It's, it's right there. It was right there. Oh, oh that's Windows. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that one there. Click. It's like the third one. Oh. Um, if I run this, oh. Unstable FFI. Yeah. Whoa. And uh, it will follow mouse. Uh, Game developer. Yeah, they are, these are not my assets. These are uh, hash rugs, right? So from like two years ago. <laughs> um, and let me remove my old artifacts. And so I have Dino.json here, which yeah, has the a task that compiles this. Dino task compile. And again. It works, and uh, I can. Do another directory. Will work. Uh, yeah, should. Uh, move game to like home. Oh, I'm missing sprites. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was interested in. If it is, if you bundle all the assets. Mm -hmm. This is something we, we need to solve. It's like one missing piece in the file. Yeah. Also, if you if you ship this currently, uh, because it's written in SDL, you need SDL DLLs. Um, so yeah, that's something like a, that's a hard problem. But yeah. Um, and I also have this Windows Virtual Machine, uh, which has the same code but has the SDL DLLs now. And remove game exe now. 
Oh, let's try Dino run. Oh, unstable. Yeah, so that's it. And do you now compile the same thing? You need to use no check. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, we now have a game exe. works similarly. Um, so on Windows, this uses uh, the resource table that's also that also has icons and stuff uh, in normal applications. And so it's injected into the resource table. If it's not, it will create a new one. Um, and you're you saying that you can now set a custom icon for the to use the exe? Uh, you can, yeah, we can add that support easily because we now can parse and inject into resource tables. Please do, there's a ton of outputs on issues to customize the icon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, I don't have a, do I have code sign here? I uh, guess it's called. Sign Yeah, sign to, I don't. Uh, but you have to trust me it works. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you look using in resource editor or something on Windows, it should show uh, the artifacts inside. Yeah, uh, where's my slide? Okay. Um, uh, Buns bundle compile is basically how Dino compile worked before this change. So it just appends at the end. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, comparing binary sizes, uh, that's fun. This is Dino compile size, uh, the baseline size, and this is node. Um, and Dino RT is kind of better than all of them. Um, and yeah, that shows how important this optimization is to like have a stripped down version of Dino. Uh, we can do even better. Like this is currently about 75 megabytes. On Unix, we strip this, so it's about 60, 50 to 60 megabytes uh, size. Uh, you can go even lower if you really wanted to, like removing SWC uh, somehow, because it's kind of yeah, 